Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays and it's time for another uh, Minecraft Dungeons, Dragons and Space Shuttles update. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to talk about, whilst it's not the most obvious thing here, is these cables. So we've had for a little while, as you've probably seen in previous videos, we've had a computer system set up over here that's linked up to all of the storage in this area and to I think some other storage in some other areas as well, although I have to admit I'm not quite certain, but certainly to everything here. And this means you can look in here and you can search for anything you want. So I was looking for dark oak recently. If I wanted gold, I can search for that. If I want iron, I can search for that and so on. And it comes up with all the things that have got that in the name. So that's really convenient. And it's very, very useful when you're trying to build something, especially as it's got a built-in crafting thing. So if I wanted something like um, dark oak wood stairs, I can say, well, I've got the planks written here, move the items, and it'll automatically put them in there and I can just make those. I, I won't because I don't actually want any more dark oak wood stairs, but that would be how that would, that's how that works. So there have been various extensions to this. So this, this um, has lots and lots of complicated stuff involved in it. Um, so down here is the, this is the crafting computerized section. And you're probably better off watching Al's videos if you want to know the details about it. But in a nutcase, we've got um, over here, these are the machines that do the actual craft. No, sorry, these are the machines that have storage for um, each recipe. So we can make four different things at once. And then over here, we've got... Um, I think these molecular assemblers are probably what do the actual construction, but I have to admit I'm not 100% sure. These rainbow blocks are a sort of, they're described as an ME controller, and I think they're basically a, a sort of a, a router for directing the traffic around the network. So we've got one one network here, which it says is, is the local one, and that's connected up to the stuff for building all the things here. Then we've got various P2P networks, and I'm going to talk about those in quite a lot of detail soon as well, because these are ways of getting more data down cables over long, very long distances. And so the way this works is that these all go directly into the controller, which means each one of these can have up to 32 channels coming out of it, because that's the maximum that can go on a single block. And they then go in and can go down one of these fat, massive fat cables. These thin cables will only take up to eight, but that doesn't matter because the P2P controller is a system for compressing those 32 down onto a single um, a single channel. There we go. So you can see there's one of eight channels used here, one of eight on here, and one of eight on here, because each one of these is carrying a single P2P network. And then we go on to here, and there's three channels being carried, because at this point, all of these have gone together and they're going down the same cables. We've got all three going down here. Each of these then goes to a different place and the colour coding here is for our convenience. The colour codes that actually matter for the system are the ones shown on here. So this one, this one is the brown, green, orange, green network. This one is the green, moss, black, green network. And over there we've got what looks like purple, moss or purple, brown, orange, whatever. Anyway, they're all they're all slightly different. So you can you can tell them apart. But because that's complicated, oh, you can also look at them and it'll tell me this is 8949. This one's 954, 95F9 and, and so on. But for our, our sake of our uh, puny sanities, we've decided that this one is blue. That one is red. This one is green. Simple. So the other ends where they connect in, it's exactly the same. We've also got some blood moonlighting going on down here, which is a little bit disconcerting. So here we've got, this is the blue cable. This is the one, the cable that goes up into the computer system I was just showing you. And so this is coming out of the P2P network a very short distance later. I mean, this could quite easily just be the, the full size cable coming over here. But this means we can put more stuff in here later and we can use the same sort of principle everywhere. So this goes into what's actually a blue cable, even though it looks green because of the blood moon. And there we've got, again, we've got 8949. And that's then feeding out the 32, the potentially up to 32 channels up there. And we're currently using three of those. Um, presumably that's one for the draw controller, one for for the crafting terminal and one for the pattern terminal. So that then allows us to do clever stuff like run this cable off off into the, the wild blue yonder to somewhere down here. So this follows along all the way along here and I think down here is probably where if I got if I got my um, my geography right down here is where it goes into the tower. So there's a red cable coming off the top of there. <clears throat> and on top of that, there's probably another one of the P2P connectors, uh, which I can't see because this block is in the way. Let's take that out. Yes, there we go. There's another one of the P2P connectors. And um, this is this is the red one that then takes that then connects up into the in, into another fat cable. So we've got potentially up to 32 channels up there as well. And if from here, if I now go up into the into the tower, this is the same cable. It comes up here, 
and now links onto this crafting terminal here. So I can now use this again to access everything on the storage network from inside the tower. And this is great because when I'm working on something over here, I don't want to have to run all the way over to the, um, to the, to the storage area over there partly because it might be a blood moon like this and therefore extremely dangerous and also just because it's a long way and I'm quite lazy. So this allows me to pull anything I want out of the crafting system here and just use it for building stuff around here. Now the cable carries on upwards and 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 eventually comes out in the top of the in in the um up here in the in the sort of the white magic crafting area because there's also quite a lot of stuff that goes on up here we've got a big um, crafting table here we've got jewelers workshop majors workshop and so on and so on so there's lots of crafting can happen up here so the useful to have another terminal up here as well so I, I, so my first big job in this session was to run all the cables for this and get everything working which was mostly not too bad I did have some help from Tristan for them some of the more complicated bits but um, essentially it's now all it's now all up and working and generally happy in a similar way, we've run ca we've run cable out to the personal crafting area as well, because again, it's a crafting area. You need lots and lots of stuff, and so the theory is that now you can do everything you want from wherever you are. So in here, again, if I wanted if I wanted those um, dark oak stairs I was talking about, um, I could come over here and I could say, "There's my dark oak stairs. I want to make them, and I'll be able to make them here." And so I could come over and I could replace these these um, seared brick stairs with dark oak stairs if I wanted to, absolutely trivially. It'd be nice, really, really easy. So the plan was that this would be really straightforward. It'd make it nice and easy. They would I wouldn't have to do anything like as much running around to go and get things. I am going to have to eat some more food, though, because I'm about to starve. What have we got here? We've got a, a plain yoghurt. Yum. And then a pretzel with mustard. Yum, indeed. Well, that seems to have... Well, it's given me the well-fed. Okay, I'm reasonably happy with that. Although I'm not quite sure why it's given me well-fed, given that I've still got three blobs of unfedness on there. But anyway... That's uh, getting. That's a bit of a, a um, an aside. So yes, the plan was that this would stop me having to run back and forth all over the place to, to do things. However, it turns out half the stuff I want to build these days because it's more complicated. It turns out half the stuff I wanted because it's so much more complicated now has to be made in different machines. So typically it's a carpenter. It can be a carpenter as well. So here we go. I've got these vanadium plates, plastic, enriched alloy, microchips, so and and also liquid crystalline. So. I haven't got a carpenter here. I certainly haven't got all those fluids here. So despite having all, gone to all of the effort to, to, to allow me to not have to run around all over the place, I still have to go over to the personal crafting area, which is being blood mooned at the moment because it's above ground and therefore, <laughs> and therefore scary. I'd have to come over here and go to one of the carpenters. And more than that, I'd have to come over here and identify the liquid I want, which in this case was crystalline, grab the tank, pour some of it into the carpenter, and then I could come in here and I could actually make that... Um, that particular thing as I wanted. I think this is actually a um, an energy module rather than a speed module. But the point stands that I, whilst we've automated things to an extent, so I don't so I don't for a simple three by three and even five by five recipes, I don't have to leave the comfort of my tower. For anything that requires a carpenter, I still have to. So we're not quite there yet. The other slight downside of this system is if you are doing a five by five recipe, like this displacement rune. Uh, that isn't a 5x5. Five five. Like an iron tank, for, for example, that's a massive recipe. Um, and this can't be built inside the crafting system. You see there's no plus down here, so you can't import the things across. So you still have to look at this and remember all of the ingredients in it for long enough to go and grab them out of the, um, out of the crafting system, put them into your regular inventory, and then go off and use, in this case, the elite crafting table to go and make it. So we get it. We've made some progress, but it's still not quite good enough. We still we, There's still stuff that requires you to run around and remember things. But it is much better than it was before. So I'm definitely, uh, definitely pleased with this. Definitely enjoying using it a, a lot more. It makes things a lot easier. I've also discovered, and this doesn't really show up because of the aforementioned Blood Moon, but you can actually recolor these crafting terminals. Normally they're purple, but if you put a blue cable on the back of it, then it goes blue. If you put a red cable on the back of it, it goes red, and so on. So I've made these ones blue in here, just because that's the colour of my tower. And once the Blood Moon passes, they'll go back to their normal colour, and you'll see that they're a, a, nice blue, a nice blue shade. So, this brings us on to things I've been doing in the tower. And in order to... Um, so... And you'll remember from previous episodes that in order to keep the supply of blood that powers everything going in here, and as you see, these tanks are now completely full, which is nice, I had to go all the way over to the mob farm, which is way off over that way, with some iron tanks, grab and, and then sit around for a little while while enough mobs were killed on the spiky plate things to fill up the tanks. 
and then I could bring the tanks back, dump them into the um, in, into the uh, collection system over in, in here, into these tanks to keep these full, and then that would then be passed on into the rest of the system. Now, what we've done now is it feels extremely cruel, but it's also extremely effective. Tristan managed to find a zombie with regenerate with the regeneration ability, and that means that each time it gets hurt, in fact, if I if I repel up here and look down on him, you can see it is. Where is he? There he is. His health is bouncing around between 27 and 28. So as he's getting hurt by the spiky plate, it's going down to 27. Then he's recovering because he's regenerating his health and going back up to 28. And that means this guy, this poor sod down here in this little jail cell, is capable of producing a never-ending supply of blood. And he's producing it faster than we're using it at the moment. So that's why these tanks are now eternally full. We don't need to worry about running out of blood, basically ever. Um, now, okay, in the future we might find faster ways of using it and, and we'll eventually start to put dents in it. But at the moment, we have an unlimited supply of blood and one that isn't limited, that doesn't require a player to stand around. Because the problem with the blood farm over there, the mob farm, sorry, is that in order to get it to generate mobs in order to generate the blood, you needed to have a player standing nearby because mobs don't spawn in if there isn't a player nearby. So that was why you had to go. You couldn't just leave the tanks over there and go and go back and always find full tanks. You had to sit in there and just twiddle your thumbs while you were waiting for all of the uh, all of the mobs to spawn in and then die. Whereas this guy, because he's already spawned in and we're not spawning in new ones, he's just always there. Even if we're not actually playing the game, even if there's nobody on the server, he will still be there, getting poked by the spiky plates and donating his blood to the cause in here. And that means this never runs out. This is always always full. And that, as you remember from before, I keep saying this, I hope you've watched the pre previous episodes, or this might all seem a little bit random. Uh, no, not that far down. As you remember from before, that's being piped over here into this, into the, these, the, these are the same big blood storage tanks in the bottom of the tower, where it's being piped from the donation building over there. And that is then being purified by this system into, into the life essence, which is what's used by the, uh, the blood altar in the middle. And so this is this pulls in pulls in water, dries it into salt, mixes salt and the water together, and then dries presumably dries that out in here to make um, oh no no it doesn't dry it out it, to make sodium hydroxide. Then that's then pumped into here. We mix the sodium hydroxide and the blood, and that produces life essence. <clears throat> now this machine wasn't remotely fast enough to keep up with the amount of life essence we we're using, so I've put in a speed upgrade in here. Um, that's great and all, but it this is putting in a speed upgrade. It increases, the, it increases the amount of speed linearly, so potentially doubles it, although I don't think it does actually double it. But it also increases the power use quadratically. So if we were doubling the speed, we'd be quadrupling the amount of power used. I can also stick in an energy upgrade, and if I put in one speed upgrade and one energy upgrade, that means that then we're only increasing the speed linearly, because this, these decrease the speed linearly. Um, and that and uh, that means that if we're using if we've got one of each and we and it does double, which I don't think it does. I think it's a bit less than a double, but it would mean we'd be using twice. We'd be producing it at twice the speed for twice the energy, which seems fair to be honest. Um, it's, it's this this system is like basically like having two machines. I think putting in further upgrades is going to use a lot a lot of power. So what I'm probably going to do in the future is extend this to have a row of these machines going off in through through where this wall currently is and then run this pipe along the bottom so that I can feed in um, energy along the back, blood along the top, uh, sodium hydroxide on the bottom and, and then pull the um, pull the life essence out of the front. So that's that's a for, for a later episode, a later stream, is to extend that down further that way and, and get the whole system sped up a bit. Because as you can see, this tank is now completely empty. So we've run out, we've completely run out of life essence. And that's because, I mean, I've been a little bit greedy, I have to admit. I put it, at the end of the last stream, I filled this up with lots and lots of things that I would like to get processed. So the blank slate blocks um, are used to make the tier two, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Tier two runes. The uh, compressed stone is used to make the tier one slates which can be then made and, and so on so you make tier twos make tier threes and eventually you're able to then start making these runes now the runes i should go down underneath because i've hollowed this area out a bit to make it e a bit easier to see we've now got this mystical floating altar going on here 
So when you first build an altar, you put in the blood altar itself, which goes in here in the middle, uh, and that is a tier one blood altar. You then put in a row of a, a ring of these slates around it, and that gives you a tier two blood altar. Uh, blank runes around it that gives you a tier two blood altar. You then put in another ring, tier three, and another ring, tier four. Um, except it, tier three and tier four require some extra stuff. I've not done it for tier four yet because I haven't got the extra stuff I need. These blank runes that I've got, you can see here, the grey the gray blocks, can then be upgraded to either, well, in this, as far as I'm concerned so far, either runes of capacity or displacement runes. And these have very useful effects. The displacement runes allow the altar to fill up more quickly from the tanks. So if I had a full tank here, then these, all of these would add would add 20% on to the, the speed it fills up at. And that's multiplicative. Multiplicative. Multipli multiplicative yeah that one so in other words each one of these multiplies the speed it goes in by 1.2 and there's 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 of those so that means the speed is multiplied by 1.2 to the power 12 which i'm going to work out later and put on screen at this point um and that's a lot faster as you can see which is part of the reason why this system is struggling to keep up the other thing i've put on here is these runes of capacity and each one of these makes the um makes the, uh, the the altar a little bit bigger and I think it's something like 10% bigger um, but these are additive not multiplicative and that means that the the altar is now 180% of the size it was before uh, so if we if we look at this altar with um, if we look at this altar you can see it's got 21 buckets in it it goes up to about 25 so it's two and a half times the size maybe these are 20% it's two and a half times the size it was originally anyway um, and that means we're able to do bigger recipes and in theory we could do more uh, rest that is recipes that require more life essence and in theory we could probably chuck a bit more in there um, a bit quicker but it wouldn't really make much of a difference because we're limited by the rate we can produce the life essence at so you see that's produced an, a, um, a tier two rune no tier yeah tier two rune which is now going up here and being uh, to go into, into the storage so Yes, the uh, as I say, the limiting factor is is, is currently the, the rate this will fill up. But I don't feel too bad about that because I feel like this means I've got a slightly future-proofed um, blood altar, which will go faster once I put more more um, processing for the, for the to produce the life essence in on the other side. So I'm generally quite happy with this. I've also moved stuff around a little bit. Now, part of this was due to necessity. When I came through and tidied up the floor in here, because this used to be earth, there used to be an incense altar over here. It used to be a bit, it, look, it looked a bit messy. It, not, not up to the standards of, uh, of Wizard's Tower that I like to have. So I've come in and cleaned that up. Um, and while I was doing that, I've moved some stuff around. So I've moved this chest one, one block closer to the, uh, to the blood altar. It used to be here, which meant there were two pieces of um, item duct required. And that meant there was a bit more lag between putting the item in the duct and it going into the chest, in, into the blood altar, which, which wasn't ideal. It made it harder to measure things. Um, and so I, that means I've moved around the, uh, the redstone on the ground, but it's basically working in the same way. We've got this thing that pings every uh, 14 seconds. This then extends the pulse, uh, but only if there's a decent signal coming around from here. If there is, the pulse gets extended and pushed through from here, and another piece of um, stone gets put through here into into the blood altar to be to be soaked. Uh, it's been a little bit. The, uh, I did run into a minor issue with this. This has to be it has to have a right angle in it and go in because these the uh, the redstone has to go in at 90 degrees direct straight into the. Um, into the thing you want to control. If, I, if I'd had this uh, repeater here and I only put one piece of redstone in, it would only have been able to control this one. It wouldn't have been able to control this one. So I've had to, had to move these things around a little bit. But basically, it, it's okay. This all works quite nicely, and I'm uh, generally pretty ha pretty happy with the uh, with the um, with the assembly. I've also now finally eaten enough different things that I gained another heart in the last stream. That was um, mildly interesting, mildly useful, and and uh, yeah, kind of, kind of slightly fun. And that's pretty much all I've done in the, in the last stream because I I was so I was busy trying to wrap my head around um, the P2P system and and the wiring and just getting all of that working. Uh, but I'm now quite happy with what I've done and it's it's working well. We did have a bit of a mystery on the last stream, so we came over this this structure here is a is a big farm system. So we're growing large amounts of cotton in here, and there's lots of levels of it. Uh, down here we're going more more cotton, and down here we're going. Um, growing cotton and I don't know why some of it's pink and some of it's white maybe that's just different stages of where it's grown to but we noticed that large parts of it were missing um, so 
someone came along and all of these wooden parts that frame the building quite quite nicely were had had disappeared and that was a bit of a mystery and also we discovered that the um the hedgerows around that were um, around here and actually haven't been replaced yet were also missing and we're thinking has somebody set fire to the um to the to the grove the the far the vertical farming facility or something what something weird has happened around here after much investigation and head scratching we finally worked out that it was because down here somewhere was it this one yes there's a plant gatherer down here and this plant gatherer is looking out and grabbing basically it's waiting for all these cotton plants to grow and then it's automatically harvesting them gathering gathering them in and pumping all of the um all the plants out into the um in, into the storage system so, so they can be the string can be used for all kinds of other things if we turn working area on if this has now been fixed but it turned out this working area was ever so slightly too big and that meant it was intersecting with one of these um, wooden wooden pillars and now normally from what I gather and I might be slightly wrong on this but I don't th I don't think I am but somebody will no doubt correct me if I am normally that would be okay because it's it, when it's like this it's just it's just wood so it was it, the, the system would be quite happy to ignore that and consider it to be a building material however up here the hedgerows we have these are actually blocks of leaves they look quite nice as hedgerows but they're technically they're leaves and so that meant that here this spruce wood is adjacent to this leaf and that is enough to make the plant harvester think that this is all a tree and so what happened was it started at the bottom of the tree, harvested all the way up it, harvested out all the leaf blocks and grabbed it, picked all of those up. And it carried on going up and up and up and up, carried on up the what it thought was a trunk. And, it, and there, therefore it took out these horizontal beams as well and then carried on upwards. And so it ended up with that machine harvesting all of this and spitting out all of the content into, back into the storage system. So once we solved that problem, and I say we, I didn't, it, this was really nothing to do with me. I was just along, follow, following along and listening and going, oh yes, that's quite funny ha 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 um it was worked out that what the problem was people came down sorted it sorted it out and now it shouldn't happen again but it was quite quite a mystery and we were trying we we're wondering if there was some kind of weird invisible fire that was burning all of this up but it turned out not to be the case so that was a, a yeah, an entertaining an entertaining mystery for a little while so next time I need to get started on, um, I need to carry on with doing some more white magic despite the amount of the dark magic I've been doing recently or perhaps because of the amount of dark magic I've been doing recently because, and this leads on into um, what Mike has been up to. Mike was looking around inside the quest system and he discovered that on tier three of the main quest line there's lots of um, nuclear reactor stuff down here so we're a bit worried about uh, the idea of, of, of Mike starting to make uranium 235 and 238 and and uranium fuel cells and things like that because well it's probably going to explode in his face at some point and I just hope he does it a decent distance away from the rest of us however in order to make a lot of these things particularly the f maybe the fission controller um, he's going to need terra steel and I'm not sure exactly where it is that he needs it maybe it's in I have no idea exactly what it is he needs it for but he has told me that he needs terra steel and I've been informed that that's a Britannia thing and therefore I need to that that's a that's a me problem like spelling spelling is also a me problem Terra steel ingot. Well, let's have a quick look and see if we can work it out. These all seem to be. No, these are all machines that make it from other forms of terra steel. So if you've already got terra steel, great. Okay, from looking through there, I don't know how to make terra steel. We'll have to investigate this later on, uh, pro potentially on stream. Um, but somehow, you apparently making te terra steel, steel is a Britannia thing, so that makes it my responsibility. Apparently, yeah, it's a sort of it's magical, so I've got to, I've got to do it. So I'll I'll get yeah I'll, I'll do that. Uh, I'll work out how to make terra steel and, and and start making that. So Mike's a bit happier. Mike also assisted me in getting the um, crafting terminal system into the in, into, into this area over here. So we we brought we did exactly the same thing over there that I was talking about at the beginning of the stream. Except down there, it's the blue cable that's uh, splitting off, and then that comes up here, and then the, the, the crafting terminal upstairs, as I said. Tristan has largely been helping everybody with all of the things they've been doing. So that's um, I mean that's, that's that's very useful. It it is it is extremely handy to have someone around who knows what they're talking about. So he was he was helping me with some of the uh, the wiring over there, and uh, and I think he was he was around and sort of talk, talking to me about the um about the the uh, life essence and blood stuff I was doing. Oh, and he was very very he was very instrumental in helping me capture that zombie. So that was very useful. I don't seem to have any notes for um for Al or Pete. So um. I don't know what they've been doing, I'm afraid. I'm trying to remember what I heard them talking about, but I can't remember. I do know that Pete has upgraded his yacht a bit. Um, well, I say upgraded. He has sort of continued to decorate his yacht a bit. So over here. This is... Um, 
yachts by Pete, so uh, some, uh, uh, the uh, new Minecraft cruise line. And my, my favourite part of this is that when you go in through here, the door makes the noise that, of the doors from Doom. So that tickles me in a kind of nostalgic way. He's obviously found some sort of all kinds of weird doors and to, to play around with. I've got these massive steel doors here that I like the ones on the um, the tower, but less rusty, and they make the same creaky noise. We've got a curtain door here as well, which is lovely. There's also various decorations have been going on, and these seem to all seem to be animated. Oh, these are, right. Okay, so there's pictures on the walls, and then there's a TV in the in the yacht cabins where there's um, some quite some highly amused mobs over here. And similarly upstairs, if you want to watch Minecraft TV, where there's um, here we have Steve playing with a, a pointless machine, which is uh, lovely. So yes, the uh, the yacht has been um, slightly decorated, <laughs> but not up, not quite up this far yet. So by the sounds of it, that's about all I have for you. As I say in the next stream, I'm going to be messing around with um, the white magic stuff, and apparently it's considered good manners to put a battery in on the. Um, where anywhere where you're using electricity so I need one in the bottom of the tower because of, because that means it, it's relatively easy to turn areas on and off and limit how much power they use so if I get rather greedy and start using all of the power in the world for my um, uh, life essence generation then somebody can come along and say no stop doing that and turn it off relatively easily without having to just come in and smash the whole place up which I suppose is probably better so I guess I'll be doing that next time um, so, yes, come along and join us on um, on Monday. To, so, actually, wait a minute. No, I'm not going to be around this Monday. That's going to upset everyone because I'm uh, not going to be able to make any Terra Steel. Maybe I'll have to have a look. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll do a, um, a stream on a different day. We'll see how that goes. Because, yes, next week I'm afraid I'm not going to be around because it's, it's show week. I'm not actually in this show, but I am doing backstage, so um, I'm, I'm kind of needed. So I won't be I won't be around for uh, next Monday's stream and I won't be around for Wednesday's Factorio stream either. That's a shame. Um, but I'll try and get at least some videos out during the week. So you've still got some stuff to watch and maybe I'll be able to do a sort of a catch up summary type video to bring you all up to date with what's been what, what everyone else has been up to in here while I while I've been away. So that'll be those will be at the weekend. There's plenty of um, there's definitely going to be some um, GTA videos on Thursdays because I've um, actually made them now, and I'm hoping to put out some extra some Minecrafty type videos on Friday. No, no, some uh, Factorio videos on on Fridays as well with some little tutorials and things here and there. So make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss anything, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks for watching. <laughs>